second verse, same as the first, rinse and repeat. Fantastic Four 2, Rise of the Silver Surfer, released in 2007, directed by Tim Story, and it's, it's the same, mostly, starring everybody from before, including Andre Brauger, Doug Jones, and Lawrence Fishburne as the body and voice of the Silver Surfer. Production budget of 130 million, a worldwide total of 301 million for a profit of 171 million worldwide. Interestingly enough, it made more domestically at the start, but ended up making less overall. I heard that called the excitement versus reality curve. Okay, so the gang's all back, and they're more famous, and they're more fantastic, and they're running around doing doing things. Doing heroic things, mainly off screen. You hear about the heroics more than you see them this time around, which is kind of cool. It's actually kind of interesting the way they wrote that. I really do like the way they're just dribbling in bits and pieces, like Sue Storm walking in going, huh, we're being billed for three cop cars? I only remember destroying two cop cars. You know, like that conversational side of heroism. Sue and Reed are getting married. It's a big tabloid thing. Reed's known as an ex-scientist now. And Sue's more known for what she wears or what she fails to wear in public. It's it's that interesting celebrity kind of syndrome that they're, that they're exploring. I haven't seen them do that before, to be honest. Not I don't even think Iron Man or Iron Man touched on it, but not like they have this. This is the real celebrity paparazzi, all eyes on them, almost like royalty in the UK level of focus. And and it's interesting watching them deal with it all. In Reed's case failed to even notice it. Johnny's still Johnny. He's just chasing more money and sponsorship deals. You know, he's he's embarrassing himself by wearing a full-on NASCAR style sponsored shirt. And Ben Groom has actually come to terms with who he is and what he looks like. In fact, Johnny and Ben, they appear to have had the most growth off screen. Ben in particular. Johnny has the most character growth during this film. He's still irresponsible, hothead. He's also reflecting on his life. He's reflecting on his choices. You see him going through, albeit rather shallow, ripples. Ripples in the pond of his personality. And it's working out. Whilst Jessica Alba is a great actress, I kind of felt like Evans and Grufford were given the most to do with their characters, with their interactions, with their development. I, I thought that... They, they, they got the most limelight when it came to acting range and choices in this one. Oh yeah, McMahon's back as Doctor Doom. And McMahon's all brooding and sinister and kind of excellent like that. And as for the titular character, the Silver Surfer, you can see where a lot of the money went in this one. His CGI would have cost an absolute bomb. And at the time, would have looked pretty fantastic. In fact, I do. Ha <laughs> ha. Fantastic for a pun. Mm. And yeah, it looked really good. And I remember seeing it at the cinemas thinking that looks quite incredible. You always knew it was fake, but it was a really cool fake. So you went with it. Having the jet black eyes with little dull reflections for pupils, that, that worked visually. But not so much for conveying thought or personality of any sort. And Fishburne's voice kind of worked, except it sort of didn't. I don't know what I was expecting for his voice, to be honest. It just wasn't that. But as I said in the intro, look, this is really more of the same. The Fantastic Four, again. No real character arcs, no real development. I mean, look, Johnny Storm has reflective moments and he kind of develops. Not, not really. The world has clearly moved on in the two years, but it's still the Fantastic Four doing the Fantastic Four things, which isn't bad. But these days we expect some progression of some sort. A new hero joining the roster. That would have been actually really cool. I mean, Fox had the rights to the Fantastic Four world. They are a fair bit of rigor room in there. Technically She-Hulk, actually, now that I think about it. The rumored cameo of the X-Men would have been really interesting as well. It didn't drop in quality. In fact, it upped in quality, visually speaking. Some of the script writing, the quality lifted. But at the same time, it kind of dropped in certain areas as well. And once again, Jessica Alba was used for the nude joke. I can see why Alba had such an issue with this series and why she flat out refused to work with the director again and wanted nothing to do with this series anymore. The nude joke pratfalls? Come on. Let's, let's lift. Let's, let's do better than that. Okay, an example of great writing is Johnny's uh, powers in flux. The fact that he can transfer his powers around the team and swap them. Um, that's got some very cool visuals. That's got some very funny moments. 
I really like the way they played with that. But look, as for score, is it better or worse? No, it's about the same. Things that are better are brought down by the things that are worse, but the things that are worse are definitely lifted by some of the really cool parts. So yeah, it stays smack bang in the middle as standard average. How did you compare this to this first one? Was this a case of sequelitis or just holding steady? Anyhow, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great week and make some time to go watch a movie.